This recording is helping people work with forecasting inside of CapSim. Now forecasting is one of the major jobs inside of the game. The basic problem with forecasting is that you can have some guesses about what your competitors will do. You know a certainty what you're going to do, but you don't really know how many units you'll actually sell. In other words, you can control how many units you make, but you might sell all of those, you might sell half of those, it kind of depends on what your competitors do. If all your competitors make bad choices, you could sell a lot. If they make really good choices, you could sell very few. The goal with forecasting is to give yourself a range. In other words, there's no one number that's going to be correct, or no one process that you use that's going to give you the exact number you're going to sell. Instead, you have to look at the overall market and make a series of guesses. With this video, we're going to talk about some basic forecasting methods to try to help you get a basic sense of what's going to happen. So in this case, we have Able we're looking at here. Uh, A2 no, doesn't have a plant yet, so we're not going to play with that one at all. The first number you're going to look at is this benchmark prediction here in the middle of the screen. Benchmark predictions are useful, but they can be really misleading. The basic problem with the benchmark prediction is that the computer just assumes how your competitors are going to act. And it gives them sort of a mediocre to lower average sort of estimate. So if your competitors, competitors are playing the game well, this is going to be really, really high. If that's pretty much dead on, then it could be true, but you just don't really know until you go into it. So you don't want to trust just this number. Now when you start around, you notice the forecast is zero. This means that the, the rest of the game is going to assume that the benchmark prediction actually happens. So let's walk through how to actually make this work. So go over to the segment analysis page. There's a couple of key things here you can use in order to figure out what kind of forecast you want. So let's first look at low tech. It's currently round two, and we start off, we look at what's the initial size gonna be. Beginning of the round, the size of the market is 5.8 million units, which is said right here. All units are reported in thousands. So I'm gonna write up here 5887. Now this round, the market's gonna grow by 2%. So we're gonna put in 2% here. What that's going to tell you is basically it's going to let you estimate the size at the end of the round. So we're going to do a formula, the initial number plus the initial number times by the growth rate. And so that says this round the market's going to have a slight growth from 5.8 million to 6 million. Let's look at the high tech as well. If you we scroll down, we'll see the high tech market has 3.1 million and it has a more aggressive growth rate of 10%. We're going to use the same formula here we did above, which just times this growth rate by the size and then adds back in the size again. <coughs> so now it says that at the beginning, at the beginning of the round, there's going to be 3.1 million. At the end of the round, we'll have 3.4 million. Now that we know the approximate number of units that the market's going to want to buy, let's talk about how to do product count. So this is one basic way of estimating that looks at how many products are on the market and says that assuming that they're all equal, we will all split up the market evenly. So if I go back to my, my low tech segment here and look at the different products, I can see I have six products, one, two, three, four, five, six on the market. So assuming those are all equal, then we could just split that number in six and we'll have the estimated sales. So we have six and then I divide the size by six. So that says that if we're all equal, We'll split up the market and each person, each team will have 1,000 unit sales. Let's look at the high-tech projections as well. In the high-tech market, we have, again, six. So we're going to go back to this and we're going to type in six here and use the same formula. So if the products are all equal in high-tech, we'll sell about 600,000 units. If they're all equal in low-tech, we'll sell a million. Now the problem is that they're not all equal. If I go back to my market and go back up to the low-tech, if you look on the very right column where it says customer survey, this here is a really, really key variable. This says, according to the customer, how good is a product? So all of these things here on the left, the marketing, the accessibility, awareness, price, performance, all those kind of things, they get translated into this number right here. All things being equal in the next round, higher scores will outsell lower scores. So say, for example, we look at FAST. FAST has a score of nine units, Baker has a score of 28. That means that Baker will outsell fast about 3 to 1 next round. Now this round they had more. You can see they had 1,100 unit sales and fast only had 900. But you don't see the same ratio. The reason for that is that fast finished an R&D project at the end of the year. 
So for most of the year, they were doing okay, but then at the very end, they jumped up to the high-tech market and made themselves a lot worse in low-tech. So what we can do here is we can kind of get an idea of what we, sh what we would sell. So I'm going to take my last year's sales for fast, which were 908. And the idea with this is saying all things being equal, what would you sell next year with that same growth rate? So in other words, I take 908 plus 908 times by 2% growth rate. And so that says, basically, if the market's growing, take your last year's sales, add in how much the market's growing. That gives you an idea of what you'll do. I'm going to do the same thing for high-tech market. So if I'm doing fast again here, I go to fast, and last year they sold 656 units. So 656. And then I'm going to increase that by the market growth rate, which is 10%. And that gives me a total estimated sales of about 722 in the high-tech market. Now the key thing you've got to remember though is these are all just estimates. If you look at FAST, it's a really good example because in high-tech, it's a really good product. It has a customer survey score of 45. <coughs> Compare that to a score in the low-tech market where it's only like a 9 or so. So that would say that even though we're kind of doing this estimation process, it's very likely that FAST is going to be very different this round than last round. If you had ABLE, ABLE is actually a lot easier to deal with because it didn't really move that much. It's, you can see that it's pretty decent in the, the high-tech market, and it's pretty decent in the low-tech market. And it doesn't really change a whole lot here. Or you can look at Baker or Cake as, as well. But the idea is that you have to give yourself some idea of what your product might sell next year. The, the Excel spreadsheet is sort of like a starting point. All right, the last thing you got to do now is you figure out your combined sales. So if we do the product count method, we have 1,000 units of sales in low-tech, and 600 in high tech, so about 1,600 units. If you do the last year's sales, it's a little bit lower, so it's 926 plus 700, so again, like 1,600 or so, actually pretty, pretty similar. So now what you gotta do is you have those two estimates. Now if I was Ferris, with having done such a dramatic product shift, I don't really think I'm gonna sell that many in the low-tech market. I might sell some more in the high-tech market, but I'm not gonna do that well. So you'll probably choose a pretty conservative estimate here, somewhere around maybe like 900 or less, just looking off of what the different products here are doing and what they're doing in the high-tech as well with that new score for the next round. If I'm Andrews, I'm gonna go a little bit closer to the estimate here. Uh, or one of the other companies because you have your product isn't shifting that much, so it's probably more like last year. The last step is you figure out your worst case and your best case scenario. The reason we do this is because we have to order our production bef before we have any knowledge about what actually happens. And we can't change our mind halfway through the year. Basically, here's the, where you make your bet. You say, maybe I'll sell between 1,000 and 1,600 units. So I'm going to find my worst case is 1,000. My best case is 1,600 units. If I only order 1,000 units of sales of inventory to produce for the year, I have guaranteed my worst case. There's no way I'm going to hit my best case scenario because I'm only making enough to cover for the worst case scenario. So you might be more aggressive and say, all right, let's make enough for my best case scenario and sell 1,600 units. Well, that means if the worst case happens, you're going to have leftover inventory. So the idea here is that your best case is what you're going to produce for, the worst case is what you're going to plan for. In other words, set up your financials so that if the worst case happens and you have a lot of inventory left over, you still have cash. But produce enough for the best case so that if the best case happens, you've got stuff you can sell. So now we have some idea. Let's go back to Capsum and put in our actual model. So I go back to Capsum and I go to your forecast. I'm going to put in my worst case forecast. So, so for Able, I'm going to be a little bit higher here and put about 1,200 units in because my product isn't really shifting that much. Once I hit recalculate, you'll notice that these numbers over here are going to change. Let me go ahead and add 45 here. So before I was looking at 12 million, now I'm only looking at 5.6 million in terms of profit coming out of this. So what that means is that I, I've lowered out my benchmark prediction from here to here, which is a much more reasonable number. It's very unlikely I'll sell 2,000 units because last year and this year forecasting methods show much lower numbers. Now once you have an estimate put in, you can go to the production phase. In production now, we're going to actually produce enough units for the best case. So say my best case is 1,600 units. I have 100 already in inventory, so I really only need to produce 
about 1500 and that way I will be able to have enough to sell for the best case scenario. If we're using the Excel spreadsheet at this point, go over to the production phase. So you put in here, what's your worst case estimate, which might be 1,200 units, and my best case estimate, which is 1,600 units. I have 110 on hand, and I get to pick what I want to produce. Let's say I make 1,500. Now I had to figure out, if the best case happens, what will I have left over? So I'm going to do my best case minus my inventory, I'm sorry, I'm going to do my, my production plus inventory minus my best case scenario. When I do that, it says I want to have 10 units left over if the best case occurs. You can also think of it as a ratio. If you divide 10 by the best case scenario, that's going to say that I have about 0.6 of a percent left over of my yearly sales. And the idea here is that you really want to keep this number underneath 50%. Let's test my worst case. If the worst case happens, I'm going to add up my inventory and production, because that's the total that I could actually sell, and then I'm going to subtract from that the worst case sales. And I'm going to do it again with the ratio here, saying that what is the ratio of the remaining over the worst case sales? So what this says now is that if the worst case happens and I only sell 1,200, I'm going to have 410 left over, which is about a third of my yearly sales. Let's say I make more. If I make 1600, that increases the leftover. I'm still underneath this though. You could also play with the, this here. Let's say I change my worst case to 1000 units. If I only sell 1000 units, now I'm really hitting some trouble. Now I have 700 leftover, or 70% of my yearly sales. So this is a way of kind of just thinking about how many units you actually want to produce. I think that 1200 is a good estimate though, so I'm going to leave it at 1200 leave my production at 1600, I've got a healthy margin in the best case, and I'm underneath 50% in my worst case. So it's a pretty decent set of decisions. So now I'm going to go back and input here my production schedule of 1600 units and recalculate, and then that gives me a good feel for it. So that it really focuses on the production side of things, and hopefully it gives you an idea of how to do your forecasting and how that syncs up with production.